Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to compare the 10.9 inch iPad Air 2020 to the 11-inch Samsung Tab S7 from the perspective of an artist. This video is for those who are having a difficult time deciding which tablet to get as a digital sketch pad for drawing. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about things that actually matter to artists, um, to drawing, to making art. So the bottom line is this. If you want to get a tablet for the occasional drawing, I would probably recommend the Samsung Tab S7 because this is significantly cheaper compared to the iPad Pro. The last time I saw this on Amazon, it was selling at US $500 and that includes the S Pen and the iPad Air starts at US $599 which doesn't include the $130 Apple Pencil so you are looking at very significant savings if you go with the Samsung Tab S7 however if you are really into art like you like to try out a lot of different apps uh, you do graphic design you do like video photo editing um, like you do a lot of visual content creation then um, probably get the ipad air not because this is a better tablet but because the apple app store ecosystem um, they have a much larger variety of those graphic design and illustration apps that is the main reason because in terms of specifications the samsung tablet is actually like better in almost every aspect i'm going to elaborate on why i made those recommendations in this video so that you guys can know where i'm coming from but uh, first let's talk about the physical aspect of the tablet so with the iPad Air, this is a 10.9 inch LCD display with a 4 by 3 aspect ratio and the Samsung is a 11 inch LCD with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Both um, tablets have very good resolution so all the user interface elements like the icons, the text, your drawings, they are going to be very sharp. Now, the 4 by 3 aspect ratio is actually more usable in either landscape orientation and also in portrait orientation. Whereas with the 16 by 10 aspect ratio, this is wider. So it's best used in landscape orientation. So in this case here, the subject matter is actually more horizontal. It makes more sense to use this in landscape orientation. And if you use this in portrait orientation, you can see it looks a bit weird. Not because of the subject matter, uh, but because if you have palettes on the screen, it's going to take up like um, a lot of space and you're going to be left with a very vertical canvas uh, to work with. It feels a bit weird. So with the Samsung tablet, most of the time I find myself working with it in horizontal orientation, regardless of whether I'm drawing a vertical or horizontal subject. So that is one main thing that I notice about these two tablets when it comes to the, sorry, the physical design. Um, this tablet, the iPad Air, has a fingerprint sensor built into the power button and it works very effectively. The Samsung tablet also has the fingerprint sensor built into the power button and it works very effectively as well. Both tablets look great, they have minimal bezels but enough for you to hold the tablet comfortably with your thumb on the side without touching anything accidentally. They have rounded corners. They both have rounded LCD corners as well. Both tablets are very thin and they have flat sides that allow you to attach the stylus. So with the Apple Pencil, you can attach with the pen tip pointing up or down. And once it's on the side, it will charge the Apple Pencil. So with the Samsung tablet, you can see it's also very thin. You can also attach the pen to the side like this, but it doesn't require charging because the Samsung S Pen doesn't require any battery to work, so it will never run out of battery. Although 
there is a battery inside if you want to use some Bluetooth shortcuts, which I don't really use when it comes to drawing. The iPad Air has a more balanced weight to it, as in when you hold it vertically like this, or when you hold it horizontally like this, it feels, um, it feels all right because of the aspect ratio, it's well balanced. Whereas for the Tab S7, um, this is actually heavier compared to the iPad Air. This is 498 grams, this is 458 grams. There is actually a noticeable weight difference. So with this tablet, holding it vertically is more comfortable compared to holding it like this horizontally, where most of the weight will actually go, um, will lean towards the center and it's going to move down like this. So it's a bit more tiring to hold this tablet uh, in hand when in horizontal mode. Now this difference in the balance of the weight is actually important if you are going to be using the tablets outdoors when you are going to be standing and drawing. But if you are going to be setting the tablets down on a table on a surface to draw, then it doesn't really matter. There are four sets of speaker grills on the iPad Air and also on the Samsung tablet. However, with the iPad Air, audio will only come out from two of the four speaker grills, whereas you will get four-way uh, audio on the Samsung tablet. Audio quality on both tablets, fantastic, just that you are going to get like a more stereo, a fuller audio. I mean, the audio quality difference is actually noticeable. Even though both tablets have USB-C ports, I do find the USB-C port on the Samsung tablet to be more versatile, more useful. Uh, that's because of some limitations on the iPad OS. So for example, if you want to transfer photos from your micro SD card or SD card, you can use a USB hub. Uh, that's very straightforward. Now, with the Samsung tablet, you can actually connect this directly to your computer and transfer files to and fro just by dragging and dropping. But it's not that uh, straightforward with the iPad. Air. File transfer using a cable that's connected to your computer nowadays may or may not be a selling point because you have access to so many different types of online storage. There's iCloud, Dropbox, Google Drive, and when you connect the Samsung tablet to an external monitor, you can use Samsung DeX to get the desktop interface. So this is showing the tablet interface and this is the desktop interface. So with this uh, interface, you can actually uh, use it as if you are using a desktop. You can resize windows, move them around. When you want to type, you can just uh, enter the text field and then type on the on-screen keyboard here. So this tablet, the Samsung tablet, is going to be a better computer replacement compared to the iPad Air. When you connect the iPad Air to an external display, it's just going to do a mirror mode. And even if the apps support extended displays or multiple displays, the functionality usually is very limited. Here, you can actually use the tablet as a computer. Um, this external display happens to have touch features, so I can actually use my finger to basically uh, move things around. If you connect the iPad to an external display, there's not going to be any touch features. So this, I find it to be very useful because I use this feature a lot, more frequently than um, I expected. The downside here is I won't be able to draw with my pen on this external monitor because this monitor doesn't support the S Pen. So right now I'm actually controlling the cursor on the external display using the tablet as a trackpad. Now what I really want to do is to use the pen to control the cursor so that I can draw on this tablet while looking at the big screen. And for some reason I'm just not able to do so there could be some bug because I saw online on some YouTube videos, people can do that with their Samsung phones and Samsung decks, but for some reason, I can't do that with the pen and this tablet. Maximum resolution you can get here is 1440p. 
Both displays are laminated, which is to say that there is no gap between the LCD beneath and the pen tip. So when you're drawing, it really seems like the line is peering directly beneath the pen tip. And it makes it easier to draw accurately because there is no parallax. So here I'm trying to join the lines and because there is no parallax, it allows me to join the lines very easily. Usually when there is parallax, uh, sometimes I may draw like this because I cannot see uh, where the line is going to come out. But here, I know if I place the pen here, the line will come out directly beneath. So that's the advantage of drawing on a laminated display. Now both stylus, um, they have, I mean, they support pressure and tilt sensitivity. With the Apple Pencil, I do find that it's more sensitive, especially when you're drawing like really thin lines, when you're not using a lot of pressure, because with the Apple Pencil, you can actually use almost no pressure at all. As long as the pen tip is touching the display, it can draw a line. So I'm actually holding the pencil like this without applying any pressure. It's that sensitive. The Samsung S Pen requires a bit more initial activation force compared to the iPad Air. Now this is um, a comparison, but still very nice to draw with, just that you have to press down a bit more in order to get the line. So if you don't apply any pressure, this is what you will get. Um, the pen tip is touching the surface, but nothing is going to happen. So when it comes to drawing like really thin lines, uh, it's not as good compared to the iPad Air, relatively speaking. So in order to get a thin line here, you have to change the brush size. Having said that, certain apps do allow you to adjust the pressure curve to make it easier to draw thin lines. Clip Studio Paint allows you to do that. This app is Medibank Paint Pro, and this app doesn't allow me to adjust the pressure curve, so I just have to make do with it. I can still draw thin lines, I just have to reduce the brush size. So, um, it did not prevent me from drawing this. Because the Samsung S Pen uses a rubber-like tip or a felt tip, the drawing experience is going to be slightly different compared to the Apple Pencil, which uses a hard tip. Anyway, regardless of which pen you use, you can get used to it very quickly. Another area where you may see or feel the difference in user experience when drawing is with the refresh rate of the display. So the display, the LCD display on the iPad Air, um, it uses a 60 hertz um, refresh rate, whereas on the Samsung Tab S7, it's 120 hertz. So the difference is when you are drawing really quickly, you can see the line it will try to catch up with the pen tip. So there is some input lag when drawing on a 60 hertz display. Whereas on the Samsung tablet, it's more responsive. But when drawing, sometimes we don't like draw that fast. So it's not a big deal for me. I still find 60 hertz refresh rate to be very usable. So for example, when I'm drawing this vehicle, I'm just drawing at my normal speed. I don't really um, see how the 60 hertz refresh rate is holding me back. Having said that, the latency is also affected by the app that you use. So even though the Samsung tablet has 120 hertz refresh rate for its display, uh, when you're using certain drawing apps, you can still see the line trail behind the pen tip. So for example, with Medibank Paint Pro on the Tab S7 Plus, you can see there's a gap between the line and the pen tip. With Concepts, the gap between the line and the pen tip is noticeably smaller compared to when drawing with Medibank Paint Pro. So this app may be running at 120 hertz, Medibank Paint Pro may be running at 
60 hertz i don't know the extra smoothness from the 120 hertz is noticeable it's definitely noticeable however if you want to get like 120 hertz with the ipad you have to go with the much more expensive ipad pro but with the samsung tablet you can get 120 hertz with the tab s7 and also with the tab s7 plus both of which are significantly cheaper compared to the ipad pro while i appreciate the apple pencil can perform really well when drawing with very minimal pressure i also appreciate the fact that the s pen is included with the tablet and this is $130, so I'm not sure which one I appreciate more. Whether this can draw at lower pressure, much better, or the savings of $130. What I can say is when I'm drawing with the Samsung S Pen, I don't feel like I'm missing out. I still enjoy drawing with it very much. If what you are doing besides drawing is just um, surfing the web with a web browser, uh, watching YouTube videos, um, maybe doing some work with Microsoft apps, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, or checking emails, then you can go with either the iPad Air or the Samsung tablet. But I would probably recommend the Samsung tablet because it's significantly cheaper. If you're planning on creating a lot of visual content like digital illustrations, graphic design, photo editing, uh, actually I cannot say photo editing because Adobe Lightroom is also available on the Samsung tablet. So it's just graphic design and digital illustration. There is a huge variety of high quality illustration and graphic design apps available from the Apple App Store. Procreate is probably one of the most popular drawing apps available on the iPad and it's for a good reason because it's such a well-designed app for the iPad so all the user interface elements they are designed very nicely for your fingers when you use Procreate um, all these are Procreate files you are sort of locked into the app in which case if you want to bring your files over to other apps you will not be able to do so unless you export them out as photoshop files so this means when you want to maybe change a tablet or upgrade to a different tablet in the future chances are you'll still be going back to procreate and you'll still be getting an ipad in the future i say that as if it's a downside but it may not be a downside it's just something you should consider so for graphic design work there is affinity photo affinity designer adobe photoshop adobe illustrator for vector art there is affinity designer vector nator adobe illustrator for illustrations, there is Clip Studio Paint, Procreate, Concepts, Midibank Paint Pro, Paint Storm. Um, these are just some of the apps that I use occasionally, but I usually use uh, Procreate. Some of the illustration apps that are available on the iPad are also available from the Google Play Store. So there is Clip Studio Paint, which is at the time of this video exclusive to samsung galaxy tablets clip studio paint is a full featured illustration app while it's certainly nice to have access to a huge variety of drawing and graphic design apps to choose from from the apple app store um, having so many apps doesn't mean that you're going to use all of them so on the samsung tablet with clip studio paint um, if you use this for drawing at least for me, I don't feel like I'm missing out on uh, not having Procreate. This app, it's really good. I'm actually using Clip Studio Paint on the Samsung Tab S7 Plus because I don't have uh, multiple licenses to run that app on other tablets or computers. So I have Clip Studio here, but I cannot run it because of licensing. Um, you can purchase uh, additional licenses and it's not that expensive some people don't like the idea of subscription apps in which case you will not have access to adobe photoshop illustrator and lightroom 
So other drawing apps that are pretty good, or at least the ones that I use on the Samsung tablet would be Autodesk Sketchbook, Medibank Paint Pro, and Concepts. I actually use Concepts very uh, frequently. And there is also Krita on the Samsung tablet. When it comes to graphic design apps, uh, that's where I find the uh, Google Play Store to be lacking. For graphic design on the iPad Air, I use Affinity Photo. It's a one-time purchase. So usually what I do is to import a photo and then add a title to it and then export the file out so that I can use that uh, graphic as a YouTube thumbnail. So that's my usual use case for like more graphic design intensive work i actually will not use this i will use photoshop on my computer i will not even use photoshop on the tablet because with my computer i have keyboard i have mouse i am significantly more productive <laughs> compared to uh, doing graphic design work on the ipad app but if you want to do graphic design work on a tablet then go with an ipad so something as simple as importing a photo, adding text, uh, it's a bit challenging on the Samsung tablet because there are no apps that are that great at graphic design. I'm sure you can find some apps that allow you to import photos and add text, but um, those apps usually don't have that many features. So sometimes I may want to change the fonts, I may want to uh, align, do some alignment, text alignment, or maybe skew the text. Um, I don't find a lot of uh, apps on the Samsung, or at least from Google Play Store, that gives me that level of uh, features. But I have to say that I do not know all the apps from the Google Play Store. Anyway, if you know of any good graphic design apps that are available from the Google Play Store, let me know in the comment section below. Basically, I'm looking for an app that can import photos, uh, adjust the text, change the font, uh, leading, skill, um, transform pictures, do cropping, uh, fade out the background, cloning, Basically, all the features that you can find in Affinity <laughs> Photo. Um, I wish I can find an app that does the same thing from the Google Play Store. Battery life for both tablets is excellent. I'm talking about web browsing, writing, checking emails, watching YouTube videos, and maybe doing the occasional drawing. On the iPad Air, you can get eight to nine hours minimum. On the Samsung Tab S7, you can get 12 to 13 hours minimum. So the battery life for the Samsung Tab S7, it's excellent. Even though this has 120 Hertz refresh rate, which is supposed to drain battery faster, but it's actually adaptive refresh rate. So it's not using 120 Hertz all the time. And that really helps. So I use this tablet from uh, maybe 11.30 a.m. in the morning to 11.30 p.m. That's 12 hours of use and it drained 80%. Um, so I'm left with 20% of battery after 12 hours of use. So that is amazing. Battery life, of course, will be affected by the brightness. So if you are using the tablets outdoors and the strong sunlight with the auto brightness are kicked in like at maximum brightness, maybe the battery life will be lower by one to two hours but still really good as for battery charging speed on the ipad air it's considered to be slow slow as in it's better to leave it overnight to charge kind of slow whereas on the tab s7 the charging speed is um, relatively all right i get about 20 percent charge for every uh, one hour before I talk about pricing, I just want to let you know that uh, prices will vary depending on promotions that may or may not be running. So right now you see the Samsung Galaxy Tab S7, it's selling at US $629 on Amazon.com. Later on, I'm going to show you a price that is US $500. That is a discounted price with coupon code. 
um, that promotion is no longer running so it's back to its usual price but usually I see it at around US $600 for the Samsung tablet if you can afford to wait for promotions and discounts um, do wait because Samsung tablets they do drop in prices in terms of value for money the Samsung Tab S7 does seem like a better deal for me so the price on Amazon that I saw the other day was actually 550 US dollar and you can um, use a coupon to get $50 off for a brand new tablet so effectively it's $500 and the holiday shopping season is coming up so there's Black Friday um, you are probably going to see this pricing a lot and that's one thing with Samsung Android tablets the pricing actually drops quite quickly which is bad obviously for Samsung but it's really good for us so when the price drops this tablet becomes an even better deal whereas for the iPad Air 2020 it's priced at US $599 Apple controls their pricing really well so this $599 it's going to stay for a very long time and when you throw in the Apple Pencil which is $129 you are looking at at this $200 of savings when you go with this tablet and in terms of specifications you get more storage more RAM, micro SD card slot, 4-way speakers, 120Hz display the S Pen is included, there's Samsung DeX which is really useful I find that to be really useful and there's the familiar file system with the iPad Air I like the aspect ratio this is one thing I like uh, I prefer compared to the Samsung tablet um, but the real edge the real advantage or benefit of having the iPad Air is really if you are into visual content creation there is a lot of high quality graphic design apps but if you just want to draw like you don't really care about graphic design apps um, if you just want to draw there are also very good drawing apps on the Samsung tablet Clip Studio Paint is really good even though it's like $25 a year with the $200 savings you can get like 8 years of subscription for those who have already decided to go with the iPad Air there's actually not much reason for you to go online and um, look for reviews to um, say that the iPad is better than the Samsung tablet uh, for people who have decided to go with Apple just look into your bank account and see how much money you have and just buy whatever your budget allows but for people who actually care about value for money um, I would recommend this the Samsung Tab S7 oh uh, one last thing that I should mention something that gets brought up all the time in the comment section is with the iPad you are going to get more frequent OS updates as well as app updates so with Procreate they just um, keep releasing new features like every year that's great whereas on the Samsung tablet or from the Google Play Store the apps are not updated as fast and with this tablet which is currently running Android 10 um, it may get one or two um, Android updates in the future it's not going to get as many updates compared to the iPad but the thing is both tablets have very good performance now as in the tablets run really snappily and they will continue to run at that um, same level of performance for years to come even if you don't update Android or the apps you can still continue to use this tablet until it physically breaks down you just won't have access to the new features from the OS and also from the apps that's all alright I hope this video is somewhat helpful if you guys have any questions let me know in the comment section below see you guys in the next video bye